started. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Who's excited for school? Who's excited? Who's excited? Fair. Here's a secret. School is my favorite thing. I love school. I also love it when my all my kids return to school and the house is quiet again. Amen? Okay, let's sing together this morning. Let's stand up. We're going to get going. God, we soak it in. For those of us that know you, Lord, we open up 
our hearts and we let you fill us this morning. And for those that don't, Lord, I pray that you would, that you would reach down and you would touch each one that's in this room, God, with your great love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's continue to worship his name together this morning. Now oh, this one you have to clap double time. Set off your pacemakers.
good one, hey? Man, that's the God we serve. Amen. He's risen. He's alive. He is resurrected. If Christ Jesus was not resurrected, then there is no reason for us to be here this morning. But he is. He was nailed to a cross. He was put in a grave. He went to hell. He, he took the keys of hell. And he came back. He's redeemed. And the same, the same power that resurrected Christ Jesus is in each one of you today. If you believe in him, it's inside of us. With one purpose in this in this world and that is to bring the truth of Christ Jesus to those around us we're gonna lift him up this morning amen church man is he good he's good
know, we, uh, we all have battles in our life, right? You got, you got family who are crazy. You got a marriage who might be, it might be falling apart. You got kids who aren't listening to you. The battle looks like yours, but it's not. The battle is the Lord's. And, the, and his word says that he's already won the battle. In fact, all we need to do is step into his victory, church. Everything you see in front of you that you think is too big and you think that there's no way through it, the Lord is the one who's already won the battle. The things that you see with your eyes are actually not even true. The enemy deceives us to say that we are defeated, but that is not true. The enemy is underneath our feet because of what Christ Jesus did for us. Amen. The battle belongs to the Lord. Lord, we thank you for your eternal love for us, Lord. We thank you that you have made us more than conquerors, Lord. And we look to you for help, Lord. We look to you for, for restoration and revitalization, revitalization this morning, God. We need you, Lord, in the very air that we breathe. We need your spirit, Lord. Thank you, God.
so good to spend time in his presence this morning.
God's here. Isn't that good? Worship today? You guys came to worship. Man, that was great. Great job, worship team. It's a great Sunday. I'm excited for today. Welcome here if you're new. Good morning. I'm going to invite my, uh, the offering boy, Ed, here. He's going to... Let's welcome him. Yeah, let's, let's give him a hand. Oh, Ed, here. I'll get... Okay, you got to tie your shoe. Okay. There you go. Good job. You're quick. Yeah, I had the third stick on that shoelace there, so... Um, good morning, everybody. It's a great day. It was great worshiping. It felt great. Um, we're doing, in the church here, we're doing some, uh, through the book of uh, Proverbs this month, and um, I thought, oh, maybe I could add that in there somewhere, and, and so I thought maybe I'd, I'd do it, and I started reading. It was so good that I did, I think there's 33 chapters. I did 16 all at once. And then I didn't do any more, so I still got 17. <laughs> so I'm not following the plan properly. But uh, anyways, this is one proverb there about, about giving that I really liked. One gives freely, yet grows all the richer. Another withholds what he should give and only suffers want. Whoever brings blessing will be enriched, and one who waters will himself be watered. And... Uh, a thought that I had had here this week about uh, finances was looking through, um, looking through Kijiji and finding deals and stuff on there. Sometimes I, I look through and I'll find, you know, even if it's not something I, I need or I know I'm not going to buy, just looking through and seeing, seeing what's there, it's just kind of a, kind of a habit. And uh, thinking about what you could, you know, you could spend your money on if you had enough money to buy this or do that or what I would do. And, and I was just thinking about all these, these things, these material things that we can easily get our minds wrapped up in. And, and not that it's wrong to, to have things and to, to want things and to grow, you know, bigger and better and do things. I think God's made us to create and want to see growth and see good things. And he wants to give us good things. But all these things that we put our money towards, they a lot of times end up, no matter what they are, if they're things or house or vehicles or just whatever it is, um, it's really limited in, in value and it. It withers away, you know, and it, it doesn't have a lot of value. And I was thinking, like, if you want to really, really think about what it's a good deal, if you find a really good deal, like, this place right here is actually a really, really good deal. If, you know, if you think about, I mean, we don't even know how good of a deal it is, but the value is just, it just increases, right? As the, as the family grows here, and as God moves and works in people's lives, and we, we see him work, the value, like, is never-ending, increasing, right? And it's actually just, it's a small, given, given if you've decided to give your 10% tithe or offerings, it's actually a small, small amount. You know, people, people argue about the tithe in church. I feel like it's a heart thing. It's like, that's actually the minimum. But actually, like, why would you give less? You know, God actually wants us to, to give more and, and he want to bless us even more. But anyway, so we'll, we'll pray over the offering. And uh, thank you, Father. We thank you that you're in this place. Father, we feel your presence in this, face, in this place. We thank you that you're moving and you're speaking to us. Father, we thank you for what you've given us, Father, everything that we have, even in the trials, Father, we know you're going to take us through them, and uh, Father, I just thank you for, for, for everything you've given us, everything you've given this church. Please help us to steward it wisely, and um, bless these offerings, and we thank you in Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you, offering boy, that was great. I don't know, that's going to stick, I think, I don't know. I hear it's a birthday today, is it Tenley's birthday today, is she here? Is she, where is she? Oh, back there. And then it was Hallie's birthday yesterday. Is that correct, Hallie? Are you going for your drivers tomorrow? Okay, great. This is exciting. That's exciting. <laughs> uh, today we officially have to take down everything. So that's, thank, volunteers, we can do it. Hey, you can do it? It's going to be good. <laughs> uh, just a couple of announcements. September 10th, reminder, corn roast at the Deeds. If you like corn, or even if you don't like corn, or if you want to watch beard guys eat corn, it's not good, it's not pretty. So I just want to encourage you to do that. <laughs> it's not pretty, trust me. I use a knife and scrape mine off. Um, and then Next Steps resumes in September. If you want to be part of the church, you want to know what the church is about, just come, on that, come to that. Sign up in our Generations Church app. You can read up on that. Um, and then... I can dismiss 
the grade fives and down, you are good to go. Yeah, you can do it. And it's school this week. Yeah, yeah, I know Matthias is excited about that. I don't think so. Oh, there's a lot of kids going. It's like the whole church is leaving. Well, we're continuing the next, uh, the mixtape series. Uh, we have an amazing guest speaker this Sunday, all the way from La Glace, Alberta. I gotta wanna welcome Tessa, Mrs. Braun. Just wanna welcome her, guys. Let's give her an applause. I'm excited just thinking about this weekend, and uh, Tessa's gonna be sharing her testimony. She's a warrior. Um, if you guys know her, she's a woman of God, and God has a call in her life. And there's something that I've always said about Tessa. We were just talking about it before. A long time ago, God gave me this vision of her in the dark with full-on armor. You can just see her eyes with a spear. She is a warrior. So I'm excited for you, Tessa. So welcome here. Thank you, Mr. Kent. Oh, thank you. So good morning, everyone. Um, first off, thank you to pastors Travis and Amy for allowing me to be up here to share with you guys today. Um, so for those of you who I've not had the pleasure of meeting yet, obviously my name is Tessa Braun. Um, I am the wife to an amazing man, Terry. And yep, mm-hmm and mother to four beautiful children, Presley, Cheney, Brady, and Aiden. So, um, and I, I was blessed to grow up in a loving home and was taught who Jesus was. So my love for Jesus is for as long as I can remember. So this isn't a testimony of, you know, finding Jesus later on in life. Um, I, I, I feel so blessed that I knew him right from the beginning. Um, this is hard for me to be up in front of all you wonderful people, um, but as, as I speak, I pray that my words would come out in a way that's encouraging and that just makes sense to everyone. So it was actually during camp that I was, uh, I felt the Holy, Holy Spirit prompting me to share this testimony. And honestly, as I stand here today, I wish I would have just been like, no, I'm good. I don't need to. It's fine. But I know that when the Holy Spirit tells us to do something, we need to do it. We need to step out. We need to be bold even when we're scared um, or we're not sure what the outcome's going to be. We need to trust that this, this is what he wants and this will um, be a good thing. So I pray that going forward, I would continue to be bold. I would step out when I get that prompting, and I pray the same for each and every one of you here. And God does desire us to share our testimonies. I've always been open to sharing past testimonies with people when the time comes up um, or when asked. I desire to be real and truthful in every situation. I desire to be real with myself, with God and with others. I don't have it all together. I'm far from being a great mother, wife, friend, or Christian, but I try each and every day to make just the next best decision. I think it's very important for all of us to share our testimonies because there's people who have been through similar things. Maybe they're going through the same thing now or maybe they just need to know that they're not alone in the trials that they, they're going through, no matter what it is. So this story might not necessarily resonate with you personally in the same exact way, um, but that's okay. We all have our own trials, and God is with us through them no matter what. So I have many testimonies in my life. Um, times that God has revealed himself to me in such big ways, where he scooped me up and whispered softly, I love you, daughter. I'm here, and I will not leave you. But for today, I'll be focused on the past year and a little bit. 
So as I share this season of my story, I hope that it can bring hope to those who are feeling hopeless, healing to those who are hurt, and strength to those who feel weak through the love and strength of Jesus Christ. So I'm just going to pray. Lord, I just thank you for bringing all of us here today. I thank you for another beautiful day to worship you, to be strengthened by you, and to fellowship with one another. Lord, I pray that um, you would give me the strength and the boldness I need up here. I know you are with me. And I, Lord, Lord, I pray that as we go out, that each and every one of us would be more bold, that we would live for Christ all through the week and not just on Sundays. In your name, Lord Jesus, amen. So I was reminded by a wonderful woman as I panicked about today um, of John 4, verse 39. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. So the woman from the well was bold enough to share what Jesus had revealed to, to her and because of that, other people believed. In Luke 8, Jesus restores a demon-possessed man, which they call Legion. And in verse 39 says to him, Return home and tell how much God has done for you. So the man went away and told all over town how much Jesus had done for him. Revelation 12, verse 11 they triumphed over him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Our testimonies have power, and they have the ability to bring people to Christ. All right. So to start off with, at this time last year, I was in a wheelchair and would be still for a couple more months. On June 19th, 2021, my family and I headed out to gr the Grand Prairie motocross track to enjoy some fun as a family. Um, Terry grew up riding dirt bikes. Me and him rode a bit while we were first dating and married. Um, but once kids came along, we kind of, you know, said goodbye to that, had our children raise them. But then we picked it up in the summer of 2020 and it soon became an activity our whole family enjoyed. So we started off trail riding, and then in 2021, we, we headed, started doing motocross. So that day, I ended up hitting a jump and landed slightly short, causing my shocks to bottom out and my feet to take all the impact. Immediately, I felt a pop, and the rush of that adrenaline uh, was quickly overtaken by the rush of a burning pain in my feet. I rode it out, I stopped, got off my, bank, my bike, and just sank to the ground. From there, I had some help getting into our vehicle. I knew immediately something was very wrong and I needed to go to the hospital. On the way there, I knew I needed God to help me through this. I, I didn't know of any other thing that, that could help me in this situation. So I texted some people to pray for me. I was sure I had shattered my ankles. So I messaged a few friends, and I fully believe in the power of our prayer. They have so, so much power. But other than those people, I really didn't want anyone else to know. I just couldn't handle that. I have always been someone who cares probably a little bit too much about what people think of me. And I was embarrassed that something like this could happen. I was immediately flooded with feelings of embarrassment, guilt, and shame. How could I have let something like this happen? What mother of four decides to take on a sport like this? Is this reckless? What would people think about me after hearing this? There's no way I'm going to let people know for as long as possible. And I mean, I knew eventually people would find out because it's kind of a big deal, right? 
It's not like I can go hide away in a cave for however long. People would know. But the enemy wants to isolate us. He wants us to feel these things. He wants us to feel like we're alone and to keep things to ourselves. But of course it wasn't long and I was getting messages from people who heard I had an accident and I did not want to respond. What would I say? I was sure they would be thinking, serves you right for taking on something like this. So dangerous. And if you know me, I'm, I'm a bit of an adrenaline junkie. I, I enjoy these kinds of things. So it wasn't something that was really out of the ordinary for me. When I finally saw a doctor in emergency, had x-rays and a CT scan, I was told I had bilateral Taylor fractures. So the talus is the main weight-bearing bone in your foot that's directly under the tibia and the fibula. I was originally told by the doctor, six weeks in a wheelchair wearing boots. Six weeks? Oh my gosh, that seemed like forever at the time. But then again, I was determined to have them heal properly, and the key to that was not to put any weight on them, none at all. That was the biggest thing, so that they could stay in place and that they would heal properly. But after a couple weeks, I went back to the doctor for some follow-ups and I was told it was actually going to be 10 to 12 weeks. My heart just dropped. But again, I trusted the doctor's opinions and wanted the best possible outcome from this situation. And God also kept reminding me that this was only temporary. I would be able to walk again. The pain that I would experience over the first six weeks of this recovery would be the worst pain I've ever had and for the longest amount of time. It really wasn't hard for me not to put weight on them because I couldn't even stand to have a blanket on them. All right, um, so now I'm going to go into a little bit of a background. It gets so thirsty up here. Okay, so rewind a bit before this injury. I can see that God had been preparing me for what would happen. There are three main areas that he was really working on me in working on me in yeah <laughs> um so this would be spiritual strength physical strength and mental strength for years i'd been feeling like god was wanting me to memorize more scripture i would memorize little verses here and there but i've always struggled with memorization it takes me a long time to memorize something it, and it's not a gift I've been blessed with. I would have been hopeless if I ever dreamed to be an actress. It would never have worked. But this prompting was different. I knew that I should be memorizing full chapters and books of the Bible. So last May, I started to memorize. I've always loved the book of Ephesians, so that's where I started. I made a goal of memorizing one chapter a month, so that worked out to be about a verse a day. Well, that goal seemed a little bit too ambitious for my mind, so I had to adjust that goal and realize that's okay. I knew that if God was prompting me in this, he would help me and I would, I would be able to do it, no matter how long it took. Previous to the injury, I also started to focus more on my physical health, working out more regularly and fueling my body properly. I always grew up very active, played many different sports, but having kids, I found it more difficult to focus on physical health. And I think most moms, even dads though too, can, can relate to that. It gets hard, we put our families first and we tend to say, you know what, I just don't have time for that. So I had started making time because it was something I knew my body needed and it was also something I enjoyed. 
It was little steps, starting to run, do some weight training. I'm a goal-orientated person, so just like my goal of memori memorization, I made another goal. So starting in 2020, kind of about closer to uh, the end of the summer, I made another goal to run 100 kilometers a month. I managed to stick pretty close to that goal. Some of it was on a treadmill, but most of it I was able to get outside, even in the winter, winter in the beautiful snowy north. Now some months I didn't hit that goal, and I knew I had to have grace for myself when I did reach it. You can see there's a theme. I kind of over, I put the bar a little bit high for myself, but that's okay. I would just try to reach it the next month. I wasn't training for a big race. There was no marathon I was planning to run. Just a way to make health a priority. And running to me seemed like an easy choice in the sense that as long as you have a good pair of running shoes, you can run anywhere you are. You don't need fancy equipment and shoes don't take up much room in a suitcase. Between focusing on my spiritual health and physical health, my mental health was also improving. Mental health has always been a struggle for me, as I know it is with many others. I have struggled with depression and anxiety since my teens. Hitting rock bottom after having my first child and then after experiencing postpartum depression with each one. Now, I won't go into all of that history because it's a whole nother story and testimony in itself. But since having children, I would be on and off medication to help me through the next 10 years. And I'm so thankful that I had them through that time. But I was starting to change my way of thinking, seeing positives before the negatives and correcting those negative and hurtful ways of thinking. I found that physical and spiritual health were directly related to my mental health. So what happened after my injury? So immediately, I started praying for healing, that immediate healing, relief from the pain, that depression wouldn't sink in and take over. I wanted to be able to get up from the wheelchair and walk with no pain, completely healed. And I thought, wow, how amazing. Going to church, you know, maybe I'll be sitting there and just God will work a miracle and I'll get up and I'll run across, right? We've seen him do it. Our God is a God who, who can work miracles like that. But deep down, I could hear God whispering to me, not now, not yet, patience. Watching my kids have to take on this hurt was very hard for me. They had to take on more responsibility and they had to see me in such a fragile state. But I was able to see the fruit of raising and training my children to know Christ. I often will doubt in my parenting abilities and I know that I do a lot of things wrong. But I also know that I try my best to do things right. And seeing that, and seeing the way that my kids stepped up, I see that again, God does not break his promises when we raise our kids to know him. Compassion and selflessness shone through in my kids. They prayed for me, helped me around the house, brought me food, and most importantly, made me my coffee. But I am so truly blessed to have them. My husband has always been my greatest earthly encourager and rock. Seeing me broken was not an easy thing for him. He was my physical strength when I didn't have any, and he supported me and loved me. And he picked up all the pieces straggling behind me as I recovered. 
He let me cry, but he also encouraged me to be strong. After my injury, I was feeling broken in more than just my physical body. Spiritually and mentally, I felt like I was in pieces. But having had God working in me previous to this was so important. Spiritually, I was able to think a lot, and I, since I wasn't really able to do very much, I would go over my Bible memorization and continue to memorize scripture. I was determined to keep going with that. I researched truths and encouragement from the Bible in times of trial and pain. Think about God's design and his glory. He promises to be with us when trials come. The Bible is full of these promises. From the beginning, through the Old Testament, and into the New Testament, he always promises to be with us through our pain, our trials, and our fears. Deuteronomy 31 verse 8 says, The Lord is the one who goes ahead of you. He will be with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. 1 Chronicles 28, verse 20. Then David said to his son Solomon, Be strong and courageous and act. Do not fear or be dismayed. For the Lord God, my God, is with you. He will not fail you nor forsake you until all the work of the service of the house of the Lord is finished. 1 Chronicles 10, verse 13. No temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common to man, and God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will provide the way of escape also, so that you will be able to endure it. 1 Peter 5, verse 7, casting all your anxiety on him, for he cares for you. 2 Timothy 1, verse 7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. Hebrews 4.16 Therefore, let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Joshua 1.9 Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I could, I could keep going with those, right? They're, they're all over. So many promises from God. I would focus on these verses and many more throughout my recovery. Memori memorizing my Ephesians also helped me continue to focus on God, hiding his words away in my heart. Psalm 1, 119, verse 11 says, Your word I have treasured in my heart, that I may not sin against you. Soon I was able to see the healing miracle that he was performing in me every second of every day. How he made our bodies to regenerate and repair. After a fracture, a blood clot will form around the break. Bone cells will then begin to form on either side of the fracture, eventually reaching in the middle until the break heals and the, the clot is absorbed by the new cells. God has made our bodies in such an amazing way that while I laid on the couch, his beautiful design was physically working inside me. He was repairing these bones that were broken. He was working a miracle. In the physical sense, being confined to the wheelchair was a very humbling experience. I had to rely on my husband, kids, and friends to help me. I had to figure out how to use my upper body to get from my wheelchair to the couch, to the bathroom, to the shower, you name it. It was a huge learning curve. But I began to see the beauty of God's preparation. Again, 
Had I not been focusing on my physical strength, I would have had a very difficult time getting around doing some of the things I needed to do. Once the pain subsided enough, I was able to start crawling around as well if needed. Terry bought me some knee pads, and I was able to go downstairs to work out or to say goodnight to the kids or even work in the garden a little bit. I had always thought a little bit of extra relaxing time might be nice. You know, as a mom, sometimes you want, you know, oh, if I could just, you know, have a day on the couch or, you know, whatnot. But I soon realized it's not all it's cracked up to be. I know my situation is, and it's, it's different, but um, it wasn't, it wasn't great. And after a couple weeks, I went to physiotherapy to see if they could tell me what I could do to keep my muscles strong and moving. Anything to speed up the process of healing or just to move a bit more. I asked if I could ride my stationary bike and was told that I could if I rode it on the very lightest setting so I really wouldn't have to use any pressure on my feet. So Terry moved my bike upstairs to the living room so I could crawl onto it. It just felt so good to be able to move my legs, even though I was still in so much pain. I also started doing leg workouts that didn't include standing or using my calves or feet. And of course, continued upper body workouts. I'm sure I was a sight to see to the people at our campsite when we went to Penticton using a wheelchair and then crawling around in the sand into the, onto the beach and into the water. But luckily, God helped me also overcome that fear of what people thought. In my mind, I figured, ah, if they were curious enough, they'll come ask me, what happened? Or what's going on, right? I cannot tell you enough about the strength that God gave me. I look back and honestly, I can't believe that I had this ambition and strength. From two weeks after the accident, I was trying to do a workout at least every other day to keep the rest of my body as strong as possible. I was continuing to memorize scripture, and I wanted to continue to be as present as I could for my kids. Was I perfect? Was I always positive? Definitely not. I had conversations with friends and family many times about the struggles. But just talking about it helped lift the weight off my shoulders and to move forward in a positive way. Mentally, I had all sorts of negative thoughts and questions, kind of like I talked about um, near the beginning. And being a mother and wife, I, want, I, I always want to take on the weight of the world. I feel the need to have to do it all, and I'm not good at asking for help or even accepting it when it's offered. I apologize for being a burden to others and often suffer through the pain in whatever form it comes in, in silence. And I know I'm not the only mother who feels these things as well. We fear that we'll be judged by those perfect mothers we see at church, at work, at the park, etc. Now, in saying this, I don't want to exclude men in it. Um, I know that it would be equally hard, and men go through a lot of these same things as well, but it's a little bit easier for me to speak from a woman's point of view. So whether you're a stay-at-home mom or a working mom, there are things that we often feel we need to always make sure we do. Keep up the house, feed our families, provide for our families, physical, emotional needs, and so much more. I felt like I couldn't do any of that. For the first five to six weeks, I couldn't even manage making food for my family. But I was so blessed by so many people who for the first six weeks made supper for our big family. For the people that came to clean and work in my garden, to drop off flowers, bring my kids to activities, and so much more. 
As much as I was overwhelmed with gratitude for all these people, for all the things that they lovingly did for me, I also was struggling with the fact that I was now a burden to those people who I loved, who I respected and admired. I felt useless. I relied on my family and others just to get my wheelchair in and out of the house. I had friends who had to pick me up to take me to appointments. But I want that mindset to change for all of us. Let's be honest with one another. Let's be real. Let's ask for help when we feel like we're drowning. Let's accept help when it's offered. I know that when I offer to help others, I'm not doing it hoping that I'll get something in return or hoping that they'll actually say, no, that's okay, I'm good, and thinking I dodged a bullet. No, I'm offering because I genuinely want to help. I want to provide for someone in, that, in a certain way. My trial might be very obvious to others, but not all our trials are. Let's let people in. Let people help you through whatever it is. I was reminded many times by people dropping off things of this, and that it's, we do this, this is just what we do for our neighbors, for our friends and family, for our brothers and sisters in Christ. They were not doing it because they felt they had to, or that anyone was pressuring them to do it. They were doing it out of love and compassion, not burden. Because God calls us to help those in need. And once I started to truly see that, I was able to fully receive that blessing God had for me through the people around me. These good things glorify God when we do them out of love and out of obedience to Christ. Proverbs 11.25 says, generous, person, generous persons will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. Refreshed. I just love this word in the context of this verse. I know that when I am able to help others, it does refresh my soul. I feel strengthened in faith and know that I'm doing what God has called me to do as a believer. In Luke 6, verse 38, Jesus says, Give, and it will be given to you. They will pour into your lap a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. For by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you in return. Now, it's hard for me to kind of say that verse, and, and apply it to me, because I feel like I haven't done enough or very much. I have not planted the seeds or watered the soil when God has always prompted, when the Holy Spirit has filled me with the gifts and the ability to be able to do so. But God has blessed me in so many ways in my life that I have been able to help others when needed in the past and you know, always hopefully through the future. Even the seemingly small steps, the kind words or generosity shown to others, have led me to a place where I have been so, so blessed in return. To be able to see the richness of God's love for me and for my family. When we plant ourselves in the rich soil of Christ, let ourselves grow and then plant seeds around us, we will be able to reap the benefits of a rich harvest in our time of need. I don't do it for me to be able to get something out of it, but because God has called me to do it, just as he's called each and every one of you to help others. And because of that, I've been able to receive the overflowing gifts from people around me. God's word is truth, and it will not come back void. 
So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent. Isaiah 55 verse 11. When he says it, it will be done. And I saw so many of his miracles and blessings through this time. And I pray that going forward, that each day I would be more bold, filled with the Holy Spirit. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. Ephesians 2 verse 10. Memorizing God's word and having his truths continually rolling through my mind and off my lips was a weapon that protected me from the enemy creeping in as I recovered. I was able to fight off depression with no medication. It helped me with my feelings of loneliness and feeling like a burden and in seeing the blessings of this season of life. As I look back now from this point, I would not wish for anything different. I will forever remember this time as a gift of being strengthened in Christ. I thank God for the strength and determination that he has put in me through this time and that he continues to put in me. To all of you who helped in various ways and who lifted me up in prayer through this time, I cannot begin to express my gratitude for what it means to me and how much those things helped. I am beyond blessed to have the community that I have, friends, family, neighbors, and most importantly, my church family. At Generations Church, we believe in building relationships. You've heard it before. And if you're here, and you're not part of a church or rooting yourself in the one that you have, I would encourage you to root yourself in that church. Build relationships and put yourself out there, and most importantly, to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior if you haven't already. If I didn't have this church family and my faith in Christ and the strength that he gave me, I honestly believe that this past year and a bit would have been one of the darkest times in my life. But instead, I was filled with a strength not of myself and a light that shone through the pain and struggles that I was experiencing. So as I end, I'll just invite the worship team back up. This is not a story of, oh, look at her, look what she's done and accomplished. This is a story of, wow, look at God. Look at the strength that he's given her through this time. So what do I hope that you'll get from me telling you all this? Well, I hope first that you would see the truth of God's word. See the hope, healing, and strength that he can give you in your time of trial, whatever your trial is. We can do hard things. We can overcome hurts and pains. And we can be better people through them. Even like Ed talked about a few weeks ago, we can be victorious over anything. You name it, fill in the blank. You can have victory over it when you walk with Christ. And I choose to walk with Christ. I'm a much pr stronger person now physically, mentally, and spiritually because of the work that he did in me through this injury. And to all of you, no matter what your story is, no matter what your trial is or has been, it is significant. It's powerful, and when we decide to share, God can do amazing things through it, as I know he will do through my story. This was something I constantly had to be reminded of um, by many godly people in my life as I prepared for this weekend. 
The enemy will tell us it's not important, no one cares, but God cares, and it is so very important. So may God bless each and every one of you, and may he give you the strength you need today and always. Let's let our stories be a megaphone of God's glory. Well, that would make a pastor proud, let me tell you right there. Wow, Amy and I are sitting there, our eyes are all leaky. Tessa, you, man, you might not want to receive this word this morning, but there, there is a communicating gift on your life from the Holy Spirit. There's a, there's a teaching ability, and uh, just let me encourage you with this this morning, actually. There is a teaching ability in your life, and it is public. And, and I'm not, I'm not going to throw it on you today. That, In fact, I'm going to go this far. That was a good preach. But you don't have to feel like you preached quite yet, okay? It's just, it's, just, it's just the Holy Spirit's mercy to you. But there is a gift. There is a call on your life, Tessa. And I hope that in the way you have shared with us this morning that you'll hear that from the Spirit of God being shared to you to have the faith and the courage to walk into the things of God. Man, I, 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 can, see a, I can see a podcast taken off, and there's, there's some things that got to happen um, ar- around the ability that, that God is putting in your life to connect thoughts and people together. And uh, I, want, I want Terry, you too. You guys, you guys, we love you so much. You guys are so qualified. Church, this is, these are people that you can follow them as they follow Christ. You can follow them as they follow Christ, and you're not going to go wrong doing that. And they have had their struggles, and they have triumphed, and they're still working on stuff. I mean, it's, it's, they're, they're a beautiful mess, just like we all are. But Tessa, I'm so proud of you. Good job. Terry, good job. Kids, good job. Um, we're going to close the service. We do that by singing one last song. Uh, but before we do that, uh, Daxter, where are Daxter? You ready? Dax, come on up, Dax. We, uh, we have a, a habit now that we have all these grads leaving. We, we lay hands on our grads as they're leaving for the fall activities, whatever it is, adventure they're going on. We want to pray for them before they go. So grab the elders, deacons real quick. Let's come up, lay hands on Daxter. And uh, what are you, what are you going to go? Where are you going, Dax? Uh, Edmonton, Nate. Edmonton to Nate, right on. Did you find a, a church to plug into down there yet? Not yet. But you're going to, right? You're going to put down roots, otherwise we're going to send Tessa to tune you in. Oh yeah, she knows how to break feet and recover from them. So, and I know you're a motorcycle guy too, so like she's, she's a real deal. She's a real threat. All right, well, let's pray for this fine young man. We appreciate him so much. Daxter started coming around in the last year or so, young adults connecting with people, and this is a fine, fine, fine young man. Great heart. Obviously, you can see his great smile. And he's a motorcycle and maniac. But we're, gonna, we're sad that you're going to be gone. And we've appreciated getting to know you. So Jesus, uh, we just stand with Dexter today. And Lord, as he goes out on this uh, next part of life that you're leading him, calling him into, Father. God, we pray for his, uh, his spiritual well-being, Lord, that you would help him to plug in and plant in a great church down in the city of Edmonton but that you'd bring great leaders and great friendships into his life, Father. Give him wisdom. Lord, I pray, Jesus, that by your spirit you would sharpen his wits so that he wouldn't uh, wouldn't be unaware of the schemes of the enemy in his life. Uh, And, Father, as far as his going and and following your leading to do the thing you're calling him to do, God, we bless it and we bless him, God. We ask for your blessing to reign over him, to flow on him and through him and everything he puts his hand to for your purposes in his life, Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, buddy. I just want to speak the word mighty over you. And the Lord didn't reveal much quickly enough to me. So look that word up everywhere it would say mighty in the Bible. I just see you being faithful in the little things. God will trust you with much as you're faithful in the little things. But there is just a word of of might and, and mighty, being a mighty man of God. So look that word up, see what it says. I think it'll be encouraging to you as you read about that. I better just say it. I saw that I saw a picture of a veil in front of you and that the Lord was going to kind of supercharge you and move you at such a fast rate that you were going to tear right through that veil with like a clean cut. It was you were going to rip through it. You're going to move into the next season of your life. 
with speed. And so the, I think the Lord would say he has a new place for you that you can't see right now. And as you, as you grab onto the Holy Spirit, as you grab onto him and he pulls you on and you move into that next, that next realm, I think he's not going to give you a lot of notice. You're just going to, you're going to be there. But I think his encouragement for you is to, to go at the same speed as he is going and, and you're not doing it alone. He's with you. Amen. All right. Thanks, bud. We'll miss you. Come back. Don't forget where home is. I'm sure your parents appreciate me saying that on their behalf too. So, uh, Well, we close our service, uh, if you're new with us, to Sunday this way all the time. We don't have music at the end. Some One, one guy actually critically came to me and said, yeah, it kind of feels manipulative that we close with a song. I just think that's the stupidest thing ever. The reason we close with a song is because you all, we all, are horrible at slowing down and taking a minute in the presence of God just to listen to what he has to say. And so we close our service in such a way as to give you time to respond to what the Holy Spirit might be saying to you. And that's one of the most important things you can do in any day of your life. God, what are you saying to me today? And that's why in this time we always ask the question, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to do with what I've heard today? And that's what the last song is about. There's something, though, through the summer that I've been away relaxing <laughs> and trying to get a little rest that, that has been on my heart. And, you know, I know there are a lot of you in our church who are dealing with chronic pain, who are dealing with uh, battles in marriage, battles in relationship. And, and, and you know, I, I, just, just, just let, me, let me be your pastor today. I know that you're carrying that burden, and I know that you're asking people for prayer, but what I don't see is people coming in the presence of God, in the atmosphere of faith, to bring their need to the throne of God. And that's what an altar call is about. That, that's what this moment at the end of the service where we say, hey, if you need prayer, we want you to come and get prayer. And I know that some of you have chronic issues and you're like Tessa, you kind of are hoping that there's gonna be a miracle but you also know that maybe God is just going to be with you in the long haul because there's a long recovery and there's some changes you need to make in your life to bring about the change you're hoping to ultimately see. I know all of those things can be true, but can I just ask, why would you not still come and let someone pray with you? Do you really want to leave this place today the way that you came? I don't. Every time I get to come and be with God's people, I know something changes in my heart. Some part of me that is rough is worn down and broken off. Some part of me that is dull becomes a little sharper. Some part of me that's hurt becomes a little more healed. And that's because we enter into the process of being changed by the presence of a living God. And so this morning, as we give this altar call, this opportunity for you to receive prayer. Let me, let me lay it down to you this way. I think you are crazy. I think you are being foolish. If you time and time again are unwilling to bring your pain, your brokenness, your hurt to the feet of Jesus. These people standing here on either side of me, they are not trained Bible scholars. I mean, they are, but they don't have degrees or PhDs in prayer. They're normal people just like you and me who want to loan you a little bit of faith today for that thing that you're battling, for the struggle you're going through, for the pain you're walking through, through the frustration you might be in, through the addiction you might be facing. So I want to invite you this morning as we sing this last song to come and let someone pray with you. And you know what? If your miracle doesn't happen today, then next Sunday, when you're in the presence of God, you should come and you should let someone pray with you. And the Sunday after that, if your miracle hasn't happened, what should you do? You should come and you should let someone pray with you. The Bible says we have not because we ask not. And when we do finally ask, we ask with the wrong intention that we may spend it on our pleasures. Maybe it's time we take the faith we wish we had for financial things or whatever we're dreaming about and just apply faith to the things that we really need for today. Just a thought. So, let's stand together. We're going to ask the question to ourselves. You can ask it out loud. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter to me. But the question is, Holy Spirit, what are you saying to me today? What do you want me to take away? What are you putting your finger on in my life today? Let's just take 15, 20 seconds right now in the presence of God. Let's ask every person in this room. Ask him. 
Jesus, what are you speaking to our hearts today? Holy Spirit, what do you want me to draw down on today? All right. We're going to sing one last song. Church isn't quite over. I mean, if you got to run because something's burning down, we understand. But just, just take these moments as we sing this last song, please. And if you need prayer today, do not let it get to the place where Tara Weirden has to come and drag you out of your seat. I've seen her do it before, and it's wonderful. But it shouldn't, it shouldn't need to be that way. So if you're, if you're struggling, if you're sick, if you're in pain, if you have problems in a relationship, come, let us pray for you. Father, I thank you for each person in this room. Lord, I thank you for the ministry of the word that came through Testa today. Holy Spirit, that you speak through every single one of us as we yield ourselves to you, Lord, and that the words of life that you breathe through us are profoundly alive. So thankful for that today, Jesus. Now, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that every person in this room, every person watching online today would be moved with boldness to respond to what you're saying to us, Lord, to give us faith to come and ask for the things that we need today, I pray in the name of Jesus. Let's sing this song and let's come for prayer if we need it.
one more time. If you need prayer, come on up. We're going to continue singing. Uh, but if you need to go, God bless you. Have a great week. Go in victory. And, uh, and we're going we're gonna to keep this place uh, a place of worship for another 10 minutes. Uh, but if you are willing, we are going to tear this place down. School starts this coming week, so you can help us with that. Other than that, have a great week. God bless you. See you back here next week.